Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing fragrances that I received for free in PR. I am beyond blessed and grateful to be at a point where I get fragrances in PR. I dreamt about this day. I am always extremely grateful to all the brands that send things my way, but I want you guys to know, and the brands know this as well, that you are my number one priority. It doesn't matter to me whether something was sent to me for free or not because my integrity and honesty relationship with you guys is the thing that is most important to me on this channel. I value your trust so tremendously and I cannot thank you enough of all of the support and love that I get. So let's get into these fragrances. So the first fragrance I'm gonna review is Fragrance Dubois Santal Complete. I, <laughs> I just about died when I got their email. I was floored getting an email from Fragrance Dubois. It was like a dream come true. Now this baby right here has gotten a heck of a lot of hype. It is definitely one of their most popular fragrances and I get a lot of people recommending this scent to me because you guys know how much I love sandalwood, vanilla, and coconut. Some of my favorite notes ever. Now before I smelled this, I was expecting this fragrance to smell very different based on all the reviews that I've heard from how it actually does smell to me. So I want you to look at the notes, imagine this fragrance, and then picture something far more toned down than you're expecting it to be. All of the notes, even the most prominent notes to me, are very mellowed out, very subtle, it all just kind of blends together. So this is a powdery, creamy, sandalwood, vanilla, coconut musk. Definitely powdery from the violet, and in the opening, I'm getting this sweet lemon, a touch of that. I can also definitely pick up on the pepper. So after a couple minutes, the lemon passes, and we move on to the dry down, which develops a very prominent, waxy, balmy feel to it, very similar to Replica's Jazz Club. So the scent profiles themselves do not smell like each other. Like Jazz Club is unisex leaning masculine. This is unisex leaning a little bit feminine. Jazz Club has tobacco, it's boozy. Like it's a, it's a totally different vibe, but there's this real DNA undertone that's shared. And I describe it again, like this waxy, balmy feel. The sandalwood that's in here is very mellowed out, creamy. The coconut is not a sweet, in your face coconut. In my opinion, it's very subtle. It comes off more like a natural coconut oil, you know, in the jar where you get that waxy, thick consistency, but then when you warm it up, it be, it thins out. The vanilla is not sugary or sweet. It, it, there's really just a touch of that, in my opinion, just to round everything out. And I have enjoyed the scent of Santal Complete since the moment I tried it. I've gone through many, many decants, but I've never completely understood the hype. I like it for sure. I think it smells very nice, but it does smell muted to me, like all of the notes, if that makes sense. And it smells more like a nice body care product to me. Also, Fragrance de Bois, as you may know, is a luxury niche house. We got expensive price tags here. Unfortunately, Santal Complete, with me moisturizing, over spraying, this will last only four hours on me, which is not great for the price that you would be paying. And I was very excited to get the bottle because I was hoping that maybe something would click and I would just be absolutely obsessed with it because looking at the notes, you would think. So I actually don't think it lives up to the hype. It's nice and I can understand why people like this, but I'm not getting that whole like, I'm enamored by this wow factor that other people um, experience with this. Another one that definitely falls in the same vein for me is Soradora's Orchidea Rouge. And you guys know my absolute obsession with Mandorle. It's like seriously the next best thing. This has that same waxy balmy thing going on. Jazz Club, Centel Complete. So if you really love that kind of quality in a fragrance, I think you will absolutely love Orchidea Rouge. So again, we have different notes from those other fragrances, 
but there's that underlying DNA. And it's again, another one that I enjoy. I was thinking that having the bottle, getting more experience out of it, I was like, okay, maybe I'm gonna fall like really in love here. It has stayed alike. And again, with all the notes I'm gonna name, picture them very muted, subtle, blended, balmy. So we have rum, benzoin, musk, heliotrope, elemi. So it has that boozy, powdery feel, a touch of vanilla, very similar to Sangtao Complet, nothing too sweet or sugary at all. A creamy almond milk. So again, if you are just through and through absolutely obsessed with the kind of vibe that Sangtao Complet has, I'm quite confident that you would love Orchidée Rouge, but for me, it is a light. Definitely think they're nice, but I'm left wanting more of an impact. Next up, I have this fragrance from Nonfiction, and this is Suntal Cream. I had actually never heard of the brand before they reached out to me. I really love their aesthetic. It's just simple, classic, gorgeous. This is going to be in the same general overarching family of Lilavo's Suntal 33. It is not too close whatsoever. Like, it's definitely its own fragrance, but it kind of pays homage to that scent. This is going to be way toned down in comparison, okay? We have a very fruity, creamy, well done fig. You guys know I'm like not into fig with fragrances, but I have to say it is very nicely done in here. And then sandalwood and cardamom are the other two notes that predominantly jump out at me. So it's a more simplistic blend and yet it still has edge. So I kind of have mixed feelings about this one. It smells like a bougie body care product, but then it has that bite and edge spice from the cardamom, from the dry sandalwood. Thing is the sandalwood in here does pull dill-like. It's very fresh, clean, definitely fits into that whole minimalistic clean girl aesthetic, but I would, I'd say it's unisex. The great thing about this brand is that if you love a scent, they have everything in that scent. They have hand lotion, body lotion, hand wash, body wash, like you list it, you name it. They have it. And they did send me their discovery set, so I've been able to try all the scents from their brand. This one is the best, in my opinion. So I think it's nice. I, Like I said, I have mixed feelings about it because there's parts of it that smell like very, just very natural, well done, clean, so I appreciate that. I like the overall vibe that it has, but not super into fig and that kind of dill-like sandalwood is not, not exactly how I love my sandalwoods. So if you're into that kind of sandalwood, into fig, then I think you would like this. Now this brand has newly launched at Twisted Lily, which you guys know I'm an affiliate with. Uh, it doesn't make a difference, okay? <laughs> I have uh, several fragrances from brands that I'm an affiliate with in this video doesn't influence my opinion. But anyways, always very exciting to see new brands launch with Twisted Lily. I just absolutely adore their brand. They have a huge selection of niche fragrances to shop online. I have a discount code on a 10. So getting these fragrances at a discounted price is always amazing. They offer spray samples at an affordable price. It, I, I absolutely love them. I shop there all the time. So this is Wilgermain, Wilgermain, not sure. Passion Victim. Really love the bottle. Can't go wrong with a classic look. Unfortunately, I really don't like this. This is definitely falling into the category of classic mature perfumery. Think Chanel, which for the record is like, I want to love that house so much because you know, the aesthetic, the bottles, the vibe, immaculate, but seriously, the only Chanel fragrances I love are the Coco Mademoiselle line. Anyway, a little bit Middle Eastern smelling as well with the spices, dark amber notes, a lot of citrus from the main Mandarin, a mature rose, and some vanilla. Not edible or sweet, how you may be used to vanilla smelling. No, it's just like a, it's a touch of that. Like I said, this is definitely giving me just that classic, more dated, mature perfume scent profile. It's unfortunately not the vibe for me 
at all. Next, I have a 15 ml from EBK. This is Alexandrite and Patchouli. You guys, this is, <laughs> this is a very well crafted fragrance and this has a heck of a lot of character. This is bold, okay? This is so bold and so strong that I can't, I actually can't even do one spray. Like, it's a lot. This is a patchouli bomb. So you have to love patchouli through and through to love this. But I will say this is an excellently done, excellent, what? Ex, Anna, excellently well done patchouli. It is not dirty at all. Oh my gosh, it is so so oh, good. It smells like straight up money, up and down. But it is a very earthy fragrance, so keep that in mind. This has a very fizzy, sparkling quality to it, like just party, like a freaking party. Champagne bottles are popping. Smells very wealthy, like you are going into the most elite clubs, locations. You are on the invite list every time. You know people, you have connections. I really didn't know how I was gonna feel about this combo because there's there's a couple notes in here where I was like, hmm, how is that all gonna come together? But it's very well done. I think it's masterfully well done. So I think this is absolutely incredible and I think perfect for the right person. It's not for me because it is just, it's it's too loud for me. It's a bit much for me and I think it's also a bit too grown for me in this moment of time. It's not mature as in old, but I do think you need to be more mature to rock this. Like I picture someone in their 30s and up wearing the hell out of this and smelling very phenomenal. It is bold, it is confident, it is I don't take shit from anyone. You don't wanna have an issue with me. I'm not the one you will be hearing from my lawyer. So from the note breakdown, besides patchouli of course, I get the musk, leather, linen, bergamot, orris, and ambroxan. A smooth leather, but it, it is giving you a l just a little bit of that vibe of like, I'm in a brand new, very bougie car. Very clean, crisp white linens, like a little bit of a soapy vibe. Some of that intriguing, salty, expensive vibe from ambergris, and then definitely the bergamot has this kind of limey quality. A very well done version of all these notes, but it does fit a particular person. Um, and a particular taste, for sure. Next up, I have the newest launch from Mikalef, and this is Soleil Passion. You guys, this bottle is by far my favorite out of the Secrets of Love collection. This is gorgeous. I mean, look at this. You have like a little, what is this? Like a bracelet, an anklet? Do with it what you will. It's very pretty. I'm gonna take it off for the sake of not annoying you with the noise as I review this. So this baby has been marketed as a pomegranate fragrance. Very interesting, you know, there's n I can't off the top of my head name another pomegranate fragrance that I've smelled. So I was like, okay, I'm ready to experience this. You guys, to me, this smells like a neroli orange blossom mandarin bomb. Like that is the front stage front and center, light is beaming down on those notes to me. And keep in mind, I'm like a bloodhound with those notes because I don't like those <laughs> notes. So if I smell them even a little bit, I'm like, mm -hmm. I like how it smells directly on my skin. That realistic, sweet, juicy orange really pops. And then you get this fresh, watery kind of pomegranate vibe, but in the air, in the air, I get this neroli orange blossom explosion, which is not for me. And there's no neroli or orange blossom listed, but there is mandarin in here. And I'm just getting all of that, that whole family, I'm getting it all. So I think the majority of people would enjoy this because you guys know the whole orange blossom vibe is one of the most prevalent, popular, dominating notes in perfumery, but as you would expect from Mikalef, this smells far more natural than those other fragrances that are offered on the market. And I would say that this is the most youthful release that we've seen from the brand, yet anyone can wear this, of course, that enjoys the scent profile. And then I do pick up this clean musk and a fresh, crisp, aquatic, 
water lily. So yeah, to my nose, it's not nearly as fruity as it's marketed. It's definitely more of that citrus floral perfume with, you know, the white florals and mandarin orange. Next up from Navitus, we have Venom of Love. And I was very intrigued to try this, very interested to see what Paulina was going to give us. This is quite easy to describe. This smells like a literal dark, juicy, ripe cherry covered in dark chocolate, but not too dark. Like it's not bitter. It, it's more like 60% cacao. This is for people who love a literal gourmand, okay? Like gourmet candy. Definitely mouthwatering. I feel like I could literally eat this. After about two hours, I do lose the chocolate and then it becomes a fragrance that's quite reminiscent to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. A touch of amber wood in the dry down, it's boozy throughout pick up a little bit of that almond. It's a pretty straightforward chocolate cherry perfume in my opinion. So if you love those two notes, like you're gonna love this. And I definitely think that most people would find this enjoyable, especially if you're hardcore into gourmands. This has incredible lasting power. It's an extra de parfum. I could still smell this on myself strongly the next morning. I would scrub it off, wash off, cause I was ready for a new scent of the day didn't make a difference. It still stuck to me. Literally for like 12 hours. This is no joke. So I like the smell of this, but this is going to be exclusively a layering perfume for me because it is too gourmand, literal gourmand for me. But this is a dream of a layering fragrance. Oh my gosh, this scent profile goes with so many fragrances in my collection. So I will definitely be cooking up some concoctions with this baby this fall and winter. This next one that I received was actually not PR. This was an incredible, incredibly kind gift from Marlena Stell. Marlena, if you're watching this, thank you so much. You absolutely made my day. Apparently, she watches my videos. I was like, what? If you guys are into the makeup space, you guys know Marlena. You know Marlena. And she's actually been making fragrance content as well. So check her out. So unbelievably kind. She saw that Ex Nihilo's Fleur Narcotique was on my wish list and she kindly sent this to me. This is a very fresh, modern floral perfume with sweet lychee. This is a peony bomb, like very delicate, very pink. Oh my gosh, it smells like an explosion of pink. And I also get a dominant, fresh jasmine note. And when I was sampling this, it smelled sweeter to me. Like I was definitely getting more of that peach and lychee. Then when I got the bottle, it was much more floral to me than what I had experienced from the sample. I mean, from the sample, like obviously I knew it was a floral. It's a floral dominant perfume, but I'm just saying those fruity notes popped more in my experience from the sample than when I got my hands on this baby. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes our experience with samples differs from when we get the full bottle. You know, sometimes we change our minds or our nose starts to pick up other things in the fragrance. So this is very fresh and dew covered, but much more floral than I feel like fits me and my personality. And I also feel like it smells a bit too mature for me. Again, not not old, no, no, not at all, but just grown. I feel like it feels more grown than me. Very classy, polished, we get a clean musk. That peony and jasmine is seriously the star of the show here, secondary with that lychee on top. So I still think this is a very pretty fragrance. I'm just not feeling like it's quite me anymore, but this will not go to waste. Okay, I have I have a home. I know exactly who this is gonna go to. Definitely be into your floral perfumes. And the more you spray, because I'm an oversprayer, the more floral you're gonna get. Whereas if, if you go more lightly with the fragrance, I feel like those fruity notes pop a little bit more. Then, very excitingly, I got my first PR from Kaoli. It took a while to get here, so I actually purchased my own travel spray of Love Fest Burning Cherry 48, so that's why this is packaged and 
I'm able to speak on my experience. Oh my gosh, I was very excited, very excited to try this because I was like, all right, all right, a cherry with some woody notes, burning cherry, oh my gosh, and some praline, like, sign me up, I am all about it, I am ready to experience this deep, sexy cherry. I'm not a fan of the opening. I do see a resemblance to Lost Cherry in the opening, but it goes into a different direction as it dries down. So the opening is a syrupy, sweet maraschino cherry, similar to Lost Cherry, but a sharper take on that. Lost Cherry is more boozy, more almond. It feels a tad deeper. As it dries down, the cherry tones down and the praline and woody notes come in. I do like the dry down. It's more evenly balanced, but I still get that maraschino artificial cherry. Below average performance. And although I like the dry down, it's still not for me because the way the cherry is done in here is just not the way that I like cherry. I don't smell anything burning, but when I put my nose up to my skin, I can pick up a hint of like a smoky Palo Santo. I get the Tonka balsam, a lot of similar notes in here as Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. I'm gonna see if one of my sisters want this. I think one of them would like it. I'm gonna end with the brand Un Nuit Nomad. I got two from them, very kind. The first one being Yardines de Misfa. And again, they included a discovery set, so I was able to test the sample first before opening this, which is why it's packaged. This is incredible, okay? Sweet dates drenched in honey. Sugared candied rose with a touch of almond and saffron. Think Turkish delight, a sprinkling of spices, a very modern, addictive Middle Eastern scent. You are literally dripping in dates and honey. It has a boozy factor, it's alluring and bold. A very powerful scent. Don't overspray this, okay? You will choke yourself out. You can easily get nauseated if you overdo it, okay? This is the scent for cold days. Do not be bringing this out in the spring and summer, but this is going to cut through the cold like a champ. Very unique. Oh my gosh, it is so well done. Like the first, First spray, I was like, wow, that's a good one. It's not for me because the honey and dates, they're not notes that are my vibe, but objectively, this perfume is amazing. A very sweet gourmand that isn't straight up food. It has a lot of character. So I would like to give this to one of you. If anyone is interested in this, sounds like a cup of tea, just drop me a comment down below. Let me know you'd be interested. Follow me on Instagram, be based in the US. By the way, we're almost at 20K and I will be doing an international giveaway. So for anyone overseas, okay, I haven't forgot about you. Like the video and be subscribed. I'll choose the winner in a week, pin the winner's comment and let them know they won. Dates and honey, a candied rose. This will be for you very good. Honestly, I think it's one of the best honeys that I've smelled in a fragrance. Okay, this one I did not have a sample of, so I just opened her right up. This is Fleur de Fleurs. This is nice. It's a pretty floral scent with main notes of tuberose, ylang ylang, and jasmine. I mainly get the tuberose though. I feel like I can't comment too much on this because truly that's the main thing I get those three florals. That's basically just what jumps out at me. The other notes are very quiet. It's not a complex scent. It doesn't have a lot of facets to the fragrance. It's basically a straightforward creamy floral, but if you're looking for something simple, nice, you're into these florals, it does smell pleasant. I, I just want more bang. So those are my reviews. Thank you again so much to everyone that's sent me fragrances, everyone that's bold enough to <laughs> run it by me. I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!